Hello everyone. Hope everybody's doing good. And uh, you know, with the hat, the hat on, I have on now. Yes, I'm a Ravens fan, but I'm wearing it now to keep the bugs off of me. You know, being outside during this time of year, bugs get kind of crazy, so that's why I have the hat on. But anyway, today I want to talk with y'all about uh, the law and Christ. You know, a lot of people who you know try to down the Bible, try to down his teachings. You know, they always point and they say things like this. If Christians were to follow the book like they should be and follow it to the letter, the entire Bible, then we should be, you know, stoning children who disobey their parents. We should not be wearing clothes that, you know, have different uh, fabrics woven together in them. You know, all the, all the Levitic, all the, you know, Mosaic laws and, you know, um, all the Jewish customs, you know, not eating pork and things of that nature. And people always try to say, well, if you guys were as dedicated as you say you were, you would follow those those laws too. But today I want to show you why we don't have to follow those laws anymore. And, you know, the short answer is because of Christ. And to give you a picture of that, I want you to turn to Romans chapter 7, verses 4 through 6. And what Paul says here, he says, Wherefore, my brethren... Ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Now, as you can read in Romans further, the Paul describes he Paul says the law is not bad. The law is not simple in itself. So, what does the law do? Why do we have all those laws, the Ten Commandments, and all those things? Why do we have that? Because the law reveals sin. The law tells us what's wrong and what things we can't do. So, and and but that's the you know the shortcoming of the law is that that's all it can do is reveal sin. The law cannot save. That's why we need Christ. And also, as I'll show you in a, in a couple more scriptures, is that we cannot follow the law. It's impossible to follow. It, it's too it's too strict and too it's too unbendable. And we as humans, we're not perfect. We're going to mess up. And as I show you, as I turn to James chapter 2, verses 10, it says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. What is James saying here? By the law, if you fail, like, one, like the Ten Commandments, if you fail one of them, if you, if you, you know, mess up on one thing, that's it. And you are guilty of them all. And there's no redemption in the law. Now, that's why we need Christ, because through Christ we have mercy and forgiveness and grace, things we don't get from the law. The law is just a flashlight. All it does is show the sin. It can't do anything about it. But Christ is the net that saves us. Now, through Christ, we don't have to follow the law because of what he did, what his teachings. And he, Christ is the ultimate fulfillment of the spiritual qualities of the law he's a true fulfillment of the law as he said in Matthew chapter 5 when he did his sermon on the mount I turn to that scripture scripture reads think not this is Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets I am not come to destroy but to fulfill now when he says the prophets, he's talking about all the Old Testament scripture that was prophesied about him, that he later fulfilled perfectly. He fulfilled every Old Testament prophecy about him. Even 2,000 years before he ever showed up here in the flesh, he fulfilled all those prophecies that were written about him. Now, when he says, I'm not come to destroy the law, he's talking about the Mosaic law, the Jewish customs, all those different types, all those things. That's what he's talking about here. He didn't come to destroy them. He came to fulfill the ultimate spiritual qualities of those laws. And to give you an example of that, you read on a little bit, and he talks about murder. Now, murder 
in the Old Testament was just off the physical implications of murder. In other words, just killing somebody. That was murder, and that was it. It was nothing else that led up to, you know, it, there was no penalty for what led up to the murder. It was just the murder itself. Now, what Christ did is he went, he took this law and went past that. He went past just the physical act of the murder, and he focused on the spiritual implications of it. What do you mean by that? Well, what he, what he says here is that if you read on to, you know, 21 and 22, he talks about how it's the anger that you have towards your brother. He takes it past, he, he says that is where the sin is, and that he would call you a murderer from that point, is when you have anger or ought against your brother. That Christ takes, you know, all these Old Testament laws, and if you read the Sermon on the Mount, he talks about, you know, a bunch of laws. But he takes those laws from the physical part and applies the spiritual implications to it. That's what Christ came to do, and that's what he means by the fulfilling of the law. And now, when you read the, that Roman scripture, you find out that when you are bound to the law, you are bound up in sin because you can't live the law perfectly. And when you sin, that's it. You know, you have no redemption. No, you know, you have no way out. But through Christ, you have a way out because of his grace and his mercy and his sacrifice for us. And now, I want to get to a couple of the, the customs that, and show you some scripture about why we don't have to, you know, follow the kosher rules and stuff like that. And for that scripture, I want you to turn to Acts chapter 11, and we're going to look at verses 7 through 9. find it really quick and this is when Christ came to Peter Christ says well the scripture reads and I heard a voice saying unto me arise Peter slay and eat but I said not so Lord for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth but the voice answered me again from heaven what God hath cleansed thou that call not thou uncommon common now if you can think about this Peter's a Jew he's followed these customs his whole entire life but now Christ is telling him to forget about those laws and that what God has cleansed thou call not uncommon now in the physical aspect if you read this scripture verbatim and just look at you know the the physical context of it he's telling Peter that you can eat whatever you want now is there's no unclean animals anymore. You can eat as you please. And but the uh, the spiritual connotation of that, what Christ is telling Peter here is that salvation is for everyone, not just the Jew, but for the Gentile as well. Now, as you, you can see right here, you know, you have scripture that backs up why we don't have to follow those Jewish customs and those Jewish laws and all those things. And now when people come to you and they tell you these things, you can point to the scripture and show them why we don't have to follow those Old Testament laws. It's all because of Christ. Because we now follow his teachings and what he teaches us. Now see, why do the Jews still follow the laws that they do now? You know, the kosher laws, all the traditions, the bar mitzvahs and all, that, all those things. Why do they do that stuff? Because they don't believe in Christ. They don't see him as their Messiah. They will eventually but as of right now today they don't this is why they don't follow this is why they still do you know follow all those old testament laws is because they don't believe in christ that's it that's why now and and another point i want to make is there are no contradictions in this book you know the contradictions come from us and our you know, interpretation and how we mess things up. The scripture is perfect. It is inerrant and infallible. And what I'm and I heard and heard about this last night. Infallible is uh, God can't be wrong. That's that's how far it goes. You know, the scripture is is true because God cannot lie and God can't be wrong. Because if he could be, he wouldn't be God. Now, I want to give you just a little bit more scripture. To back these this up, and uh, that scripture comes from Galatians chapter two, 
verses 14 through 16. And I read that. And this is Paul's charge to Peter because Peter was being a little hypocritic in his uh, in his teachings because at a Jewish I can't I, at a Jewish um, church I think it was Antioch he was telling the people to live by the Jewish customs because he felt the pressure because he didn't want to go against the Jews because he felt the pressure from them to continue following in their way but Paul tells him as you read here. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, that means in Christ, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew, livest after the manners of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? That's what he's telling, he's telling Peter. Peter, they're living by the gospel. They don't have to live by the Jewish customs anymore. And what he's saying, who... All the Jews by nature, and not sinners of the Gentiles. And knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And what he means by no flesh be justified, he means no flesh can be saved by the works of the law. That's why we need Christ, and that is why we don't have to follow the Jewish customs anymore. Is because of Christ and the teachings that he, bought, he brought in the fulfilling of the Old Testament scriptures, in the fulfilling of the law through Christ. That's why we don't have to follow those Old Testament scriptures and, and, and you know do those things that they used to do back in the day. Because we are under grace now. We're under mercy and love in Christ. That's why we don't have to follow those scriptures anymore. And... In my, in my view, that's a lot better. And I hope anybody who watched the video learned something. If you want, you know, you can like it, subscribe, leave a comment. I'm going to put my email address on there if you want to send a question that way. But uh, I just thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day. Thank you.